Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Carly and you're watching SoScape. Today I have a fun video showing you my latest episode of Berta for Beginners. I'm going to split this video into two parts. One focusing on the tracing, the sizing, the cutting out of the pattern and then one focusing on the sewing. So welcome to the tracing, cutting out, sizing portion of the video. So we are going to be using the March issue of 2023 Berta Style. Look at this cover, it's so lovely. And this is actually the dress that we are going to be making today. So here it is here on page eight. So it is dress 120. So this dress comes in sizes 34 to 42. So it isn't a great size range. I am for sure on the furthest, the biggest size of this size range, but it's really cute and I feel like it would be easy enough to alter out and just add spaces to each of the sewing patterns that would not be for necessarily beginners, but if you're a more experienced sewist, you could make the size a bit bigger, grade it out. Very delicate and shaped. The cotton blend makes it look uncomplicated. The dress with the applied woven trim as the belt will be one of your favorite pieces for the warm season. So on this pattern, it has kind of an applique added here. I'm not gonna do that today. We're leaving this as Berta for beginners. We're making this super easy and approachable for any new sewist or anyone new sewing with Berta style. You'll need to know a few sewing techniques to get through this, but it is going to be quite simple. As long as you know how to insert an invisible zipper, you're golden. So when you get a Berta magazine, it's split kind of into two separate areas of the magazine. There's the magazine itself that has kind of the glossier pages. And then in the center of the magazine, there is what is called the sewing supplement. So this is where all of our instructions come in, all of our pattern pieces, and this is on a matte, almost like newspaper-like piece of paper. So, see the shiny ones that are whiter, and then the kind of gray supplement in the middle. So, I've taken the pattern pieces out of mine already, but normally, when you first open up the Berta Style magazine, you open it right up to the middle and in the middle of that gray supplement will be your pattern pieces and they'll be stapled right in to the magazine as if they were another piece of the magazine. So you'll wanna kind of open that supplement to the middle and pull out those staples and just gently lift this out as to not rip any of the pages, which I sometimes do, but it's okay. You can still trace around them, but you wanna be really careful because these will stay in style for so long you want to keep them for years. So you lift this out and then it'll come in one giant sheet. So your A, B, C, and D will all be together. And they're kind of really big pattern pieces with all these different lines on them. So there is a cut line along the very center. So it makes it more manageable to separate. So then you'll have A and C together and B and D together. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I have my magazine here that we've just kind of pulled this piece out of. So normally I've already cut mine apart, but they will have come together. If you've seen any Berta magazine, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna open this up and it's gonna be overwhelming, but you just have to trust yourself, believe in the process. All right, so see on this side is D. And this is the cut line up here where I've kind of cut A and C away from B and D. So this is sheet D. And then if you turn the paper over like this, then this is sheet B here. So you might notice as you're looking at the sheet here on this side, on sheet B, there are these red outlined pattern pieces. And so the red outline pattern piece is always the featured sewing lesson in the magazine. So if you have a hard time making sense of this jumble of pattern pieces, you can start with patterns that have this kind of red outline. And those ones have full instructions with pictures showing you kind of how to do step by step. Berta instructions are a little difficult if you are new to sewing, but I feel like everything is on YouTube these days. So you can Google how to put in an invisible zipper, how to stay stitch, and it'll show you how to do that. So in the red outlines is the featured sewing lesson, 
and everything else we have to kind of do a little hunt for. If you like word searches when you were a kid, then this will be for you. It's like pattern searching. So now we'll take a peek at our sewing supplement. So the whole time I sew anything from Berta Style, I make sure I have my booklet out. And so you just kind of look through until you find your model that you are looking for. So we're doing this 120 dress, which is a three dot pattern. So this is how difficult the pattern is. I find one and two dots, they're nice and easy. Three dots, it gets more difficult. Four dots, I even avoid them because there's a lot of like welt pockets and professional hand sewing that I am not great at, but believe in yourself. I bet even you could sew a four dot pattern if you took the time and did it properly. So I'm assuming this three dot really is because of this applique, this trim that is applied, which we aren't doing. So I would say without the trim, this is gonna be like a two dot pattern. So we look on down and so dress fabrics with some body. So they used a cotton blend with a lining. And that is exactly what we are, what I am going to be using today. You can use anything that kind of goes along the same category. And so it calls for 1.85 meters of fabric or two yards of your main fabric. And then of the lining, we're only lining the bodice. I'm going to line the whole dress because the fabric that I'm going to use, I'd like to wear this with tights and it is going to drive me crazy if the cotton attaches to the tights. So as far as special things that we need, we only need a zipper and some seam tape and then some trim but we're not using the trim so we won't have to do that all right so now we're gonna start talking about the tracing so in this magazine it's going to be on sheet d so if you're looking at the pattern sheet you just make sure your sheet is on d so it won't be the one that has the red featured sewing lesson on it it'll be the other side of the paper so this pattern only requires you to trace four pieces, which is an amazing way to start. If you're a beginner with Berta Style, the least amount of pattern pieces, probably the better, so it won't overwhelm you. I have a rule when I'm sewing that I never trace and cut and sew on the same day. So normally I'll trace and cut on the same day, cut out all my pattern pieces, interfacing, load up my sewing machines, make it all ready. So when it comes to sewing day, everything just comes together and is really fun, really amazing. And I don't have those setbacks that make me want to procrastinate and not start sewing. So this will be the cutting day that we are going to be doing. So we're going to be tracing out pieces one, two, three, and four. So I'll show you those pieces here. One, two, three, and four. And so, here I'm dark here, let me adjust. Hello. So when you are looking at your pattern pieces to start tracing out, each pattern line comes with a little design here. So you wanna follow your own design when you're looking and tracing out the pattern pieces. So the tools that I use when I'm tracing are my tracing paper. So this is actually medical paper, esthetician paper that I buy at my local beauty supply. I am a hairstylist when I am not sewing, so I can find this pretty easily. You might have a more difficult time finding it. So I find the Costco parchment paper is exactly the same transparency and texture as this. It's really easy to see the lines through. I've bought some tracing paper before that it's too opaque, and especially if you're following like I always have a hard time with the red and the green pattern lines. I find they're the most difficult to see through the paper. But luckily, our pattern line today is the black pattern line. So it's nice and easy to see through the paper. And if you have a nice kind of sheer paper, it's really great to see. I always turn on a lamp so I can see what I'm doing or do it in really bright daylight. So pattern paper to kind of go through. And this is really nice and wide. If you're using the Costco or any parchment paper, you wanna get the kind of widest as you can and you still might have to tape two pieces together, but that's totally fine. I did that for a long time before I discovered this and I'm really glad that I use this now. The next thing you're gonna use is a pencil, nice and sharp so everything is super accurate with an eraser on the back because we all make mistakes and that's okay. Sometimes we trace lines and we're like, wait, where is this? And you've connected two separate pattern pieces together. Totally fine, just erase it and you're good to go. And then 
I use a ruler. This is gonna be funny. I have the worst luck. This is my favorite ruler in the whole world, but look how totally trashed it is. I've sat on so many of these on my sewing chair that it just has snapped. And then I bought a nice new one and it was in my sewing loft and my son stepped on it. And now the fabric store in my town has closed down so I need to drive to the next town over and buy a new one. So I'm so sorry this is gonna make you cringe while you watch this video, this crazy looking ruler, but it's what I have. And use what you have too. I like this one because the 5 8 mark is this nice thick line here. Whereas this ruler that I have here, this is a quilter's ruler and it only goes, you know, the 5 8 of a mark are these little ticks at the top and so it's not like a set, a set mark. So 5 8 of an inch is the seam allowance that I like to add to all my patterns. But say you want to add a half inch instead, you could use a ruler like this that has the half inch marker. That's the great thing about Berta patterns is you add whatever seam allowance you want to use. So say I'm sewing up a jersey and I don't want to waste fabric, I can always use a just a quarter inch seam allowance that my serger is going to go through and that's going to be, you know, exactly what I'll do. Or say on the hem, it says add one and one quarter inch for the hem, you can always just add like a half an inch and just turn it up one time and serge it and, you know, sew it down. So you get to add whatever seam allowance you want to add to yours. To mine today, I'm going to be using 5 eighths of an inch. And then the last thing that I use is a rotary blade for paper. And then I use my rotary mat too as I cut out. I find this is just more accurate than using scissors and it's more ergonomic. I find it's easier on my wrist to just zoop, cut everything out like this and then I don't have to worry about scissors. Takes me no time at all to kind of cut everything out. So that's what I use for tracing. So we are going to look at the pieces that we are going to be tracing out today. So there's going to be the center front on a fold. There's going to be a side front. So you'll cut two of those pieces or you'll trace one, but you'll end up cutting two of them when you're cutting the fabric and then a center back and a side back. So this bodice is composed of you know, a front and then two sides to go here and here and then two side backs here and here and then two zipper pieces to go down the back. So we're gonna trace out these four pieces here and we'll get started. All right, so we are looking at pattern line or pattern sheet D today. So when we look over here at our pattern pieces, I always kind of like to trace in numerical order. So see the number that is inside the pattern piece. This is number one. So this is going to be the front bodice on a fold. So we're going to look for number one on our pattern sheet. So you might start looking at this sheet and you might go, oh my goodness, what is she talking about? So down here on the bottom line, we have all the different numbers going through and you see they're all different colors. So we're on the back black pattern line and we're looking for number one. Did you see it? It's all the way over here. So we take that number one and we just drag a line with our finger and we're searching, searching, looking for ping, a number one right here. So the one is placed along this center fold seam. So if we look here, this is the center seam. This is the waistline here, and then this is the side seam. So every line is a different size. I'm tracing a size 40 today, so that will be the second to last size here. But I find the easiest way when you're tracing is just make a mental note. Okay, I'm the second smallest size or second biggest size, biggest size, smallest size, whatever, and just follow that line. Be like, I am the outside line, or I am the second to outside line. So we trace it, here's the side seam. Keep looking for it. And then it comes up here to the shoulder, across the neckline, good to go. So we trace these out. These pattern pieces have no seam allowance added to them. Um, so you have to add that yourself and that will be after. So I focus on just start tracing everything. Make sure you label the pattern pieces. You know, this is piece number one. This is center front piece, size 40, Berta 03, 2023. So that's number one. So now let's look over to piece number two. So let's follow the lines here. There's one that we just looked at. Here is number two. And then we draw a line with our finger 
Where are we going to see the number two? Doo, 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 doo. There it is, all the way over here. So number two, this is going to be our side front. So here is our waist seam here. Here is the front princess seam that goes around. Here is the kind of neckline, underarm seam, and there is our side seam. So we just keep doing that. So number three, I'll just go super quickly. Here's number three. We trace the line, see where we can find it. There's number three. See, I pulled this when I was tracing my, my thing caught on it, my ruler. So three, this is the center back zip mark. It even says it right here, center back zipper. So you wanna write that on your pattern piece. Neckline, arm, or shoulder seam, and then side seam here, and then our waist seam. And then number four right here. Sorry if this is a little boring, but let me just show you kind of exactly where everything is. So there's our number four. So there is our princess seam on the back, our underarm seam, side seam, and waist seam. Now the next portion, because obviously we're making a dress and we don't just have a bodice to make, is with Bird of Magazines, if there is a perfect square or a rectangle, they don't put that in the pattern. They say just trace it out. So any of the rectangular pattern pieces that they put in the magazine, they put in a little chart right down here on this page showing you what the measurements for each size is and they say just trace it out right onto the fabric save the paper and cut it out that way so they do add seam allowances in those pattern pieces so they add a 5 8 of an inch standard seam allowance to any side seam and then i think it's an inch and a quarter onto the hem so i like to trace mine out onto paper so that if I'm just making something and I know all the instructions, like for a second time, I just have that pattern piece in my, you know, folder that I use. So I trace this one out. So it says for my size that I need for the front pattern or the front because it's cut on the fold. It needs to be 30 and 3 8 inches wide by 29 inches long. And then each of the back panels, because it's split up into two because there's a center back zip, are 15 inches wide by 29 inches long. So when I looked at that, I said, okay, is it really worth tracing out an extra pattern piece for the front to be a little bit bigger? No, I do not think so, especially because it is a gathered skirt. So I just cut out one big skirt piece that is 15 inches wide by, mine's only 27 inches long because I'm going to shorten it a little bit. So I'm going to use this on the fold for the front two pieces. So that's going to be a 30 inch by 27 square. And then on the back, they're going to be 15 inch by 27 inch wide. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's three skirt panels. One of them is cut on the fold. So it's double the length of the two back ones. That is this. You can also do it how the magazine says. I just find this is easier for me, but you do you. All right, so now I'm going to run you through all the markings that we should make on each pattern piece. So we're gonna start with the center front piece, which is this piece here. Mine's a little wrinkly, sorry, it got kind of messed up on our journey. So in the middle, it should say center front on fold. So this is gonna be our straight grain center front on a fold. And then the only notch in this pattern piece is right up here. And this is where our side front is going to match. So we're gonna match the tip of this here with the bottom of the side piece and that is going to be our length marking there. So we make a mark here. And then on piece number two, which is our side front, there are no markings here. So we just wanna make sure we do our grain line. Because this is a princess seam, we wanna make sure everything is cut on the grain so it holds up its shape really nicely. So this is the next piece, so all you have to mark is the grain line. On piece three is the back. See, there's a hole in it here. This is where the hole actually went onto the pattern piece with my ruler. So we wanna mark the center bag zip. So we know that this is the center bag zip and this is on the straight grain so we want to make sure this is in line with our salvage edge when we are cutting and then there is one little notch in the side here that is on the pattern piece you just want to make sure you mark that marking down 
And then on the side back seam or side back piece, all we have to mark is that grain line again. In the magazine, it says choose your size based on your bust measurement if you are sewing a dress or a top. So I did that. So I chose a size 40 because my measurements go right, right around there. I may be a quarter inch bigger than what they call for in the pattern, but I always like to do my due diligence and measure the waist seam of every pattern piece. So right along that bottom edge where there is no seam allowance right on that line and add all those numbers together and see what you get. So I added them all up and it came to 31 inches. My waist is 32 inches, so I knew this is not going to fit my waist very well. There's gonna be negative ease, which we do not want in a dress. I like just like a half an inch of ease because I like everything to be really nice and snatched, really well fitting. So I went through and on these side seam pieces, I just made this a one inch seam allowance. So this is gonna buy me an extra inch of space. And then I'll just sew it with a smaller seam allowance and that'll give me a little extra wiggle room. That'll be my ease. So make sure you measure that waist measurement and make sure that it's going to fit you. It's looking like a lot of Berta magazines, the waist is not very tight, so you don't have to worry about it. But this is a form-fitting dress, so if you're sewing along with me, take a second to measure that waist measurement and make sure the dress is going to fit you. Now that we have cut out all of our pattern pieces, traced them, added our seam allowance, it is now time to cut out. So we want to cut everything according to the pattern instructions in the magazine. So you can just follow your cutting guide there and we will cut this all out, making sure everything is on grain and then we will get ready to sew. is going to be the end of today's video guys so for the next part of this video make sure your sewing machine is all loaded up with the right color thread make sure your serger is ready so we can finish all of those seams and prepare your cutting room or your sewing room so everything is nice and clean so the sewing experience will be as fun as possible for you and the least amount of stress so thank you guys so much for watching today I'll see you guys in the next video where we will work on sewing this pattern Thanks so much, bye.